party is about to start for these racing pups. The UP200 Dryland Dash is coming back to the area this October 14th and 15th. I got to meet up with the race chairman of the Dryland Dash. Tim told us what types of races to expect for this exciting event. So this event, they are racing with the dogs pulling you on a bicycle. They are racing pulling you on a scooter, racing with a can cross, which means that they just run behind their dog. The dog is harnessed and, and uh, a leash attached to the harness and the human runs behind and tries to keep up with the dog. The dogs are extremely excited for the cool season to be back. Training in the heat is not an option for these thick-coated pups. These athletes have a specific diet that needs to be followed to ensure their health. One trainer mentioned that the dogs often eat better than themselves, stating, I'll usually have fast food and they have high quality proteins. When speaking with Tim, I asked if the race helps everyone prepare for the UP200 or the midnight run. Yes, to a certain extent, although they are different events and they, the dogs will be trained a little differently. Um, so maybe the comparison should be between a cross-country runner and a track runner. So there's some difference between the two. But they're both good athletes. One isn't better than the other. It's just a little bit different. So this is a way of getting, getting people to, uh, to try it out, see if this is something they'd want to get outside and do. This is Erica and Ronnie. Ronnie is a one-year-old, half-Alaskan husky and half-Samoid racing dog. He is currently gearing up for his first official race taking place during the UP200's Dryland Dash 2023. Erica has been racing dogs on and off since 1997, so she brings plenty of passion to the sport. She went over in depth what races she will be competing in and what they would look like. So I'm going to be running Can I Cross, which is running with dogs. So I'll be in a ski jor belt or Can I Cross belt. Um, ski jor is the sport of skiing with dogs, um, but I'll be on foot um, with the dog assisting me and we go a little bit faster that way. We'll also be doing two dog scooter and one dog scooter. Uh, so we have a scooter over here. It has disc brakes and a skateboard deck on it. It's designed very similarly to a mountain bike. Uh, they're used for going downhill on mountains in Colorado actually too. And uh, we'll have two dogs and one dog pulling this. We'll go somewhere between 12 to 20 miles per hour for finishers and winners. And it's absolutely thrilling and sometimes a little bit faster than mushing on a sled is. They even gave us a taste of what Ronnie can do on the trails. I got to interview Ronnie personally where he stated just how excited he is for his first official race. Very well said. Thank you, Ronnie. Erica ended by saying how easy it is to love the dry land mushing sport. Uh, I just encourage people to get involved. If you have a family dog, if you've ever been interested in dog sledding, going with dry land mushing or attending a dry land race is a great first step to get involved in the sport. Uh, once you're hooked, you'll fall in love and you'll never look back. And I think it's a great way for you to exercise your dog and enjoy the outdoors here. And for anyone looking to enter the mushing competition with your dog, the UP Dryland Dash is proud to announce that there are three spots open for a scholarship. This would be exclusively for Michigan's Upper Peninsula residents that are new racers. The scholarship would be to cover all costs and fees associated with one race in the UP 200 Dryland Dash. Applicants can submit their entries at upsda.volunteer at gmail.com with submissions due by October 4th. For ABC 10, CW5, I'm Alexis Bauman.